Good morning, friends. Today I'm just going to be sharing with you guys my morning routine. Um, starting off here by getting some breakfast going. And this morning I'm just making some sourdough pancakes. Sourdough pancakes is probably the most common breakfast that I make. Um, it's just so easy. Everybody loves it. I always have everything I need on hand for sourdough pancakes. It's honestly just a few ingredients. So it's sourdough starter. I put a little bit of honey and vanilla in the batter, a couple eggs and some melted coconut oil, and that's it. Today I'm adding in some pumpkin pie spice and also some pumpkin puree. That's obviously something that you don't have to add in, but I'm just making them pumpkin flavored just because you know, it's that time of year. Everything pumpkin is so delicious. I always make them in my cast iron skillet and I like to melt my butter in the cast iron and that will help it to not stick. It melts my coconut oil, heats up my pan all at the same time. Um, I'm also adding in just a little bit of milk and flour because I did not have quite enough sourdough starter um, this morning. I always feed my starter at the beginning of the week, but I haven't done it yet. Um, I'll feed it now. You can see I already put my flour in. I have to just add some water. But if I ever have where I don't have enough, I can always just add in a little bit of flour and milk and basically just get it the consistency that I need. I do have my sourdough pancake recipe on my blog, but for the most part, I kind of just wing it and add in different things. Sometimes we add in blueberries, sometimes chocolate chips, sometimes plain, sometimes pumpkin. You just you just never know. There's so many different variations you can do with any type of pancake. Oh, and I always add in baking soda as well. Forgot to mention that. That's what makes them kind of rise up. So last night we got home kind of late and I had no desire to get the kitchen like cleaned up or empty out the van. And so that's the next thing that I'm kind of like tackling while I'm making breakfast, I'm cleaning up. We had all of the water bottles out because we were out for the whole day. Anytime we're out for a full day, we always have a bunch of water bottles, refill water bottles because, you know, lots of kids, people get thirsty. And so I am cleaning up the water bottles kind of while I am making and flipping pancakes. And then after breakfast, I have to go empty out the van. Typically, that is not something I hold off on doing. I must always empty the car right when I get home, but I was just too tired last night, so that did not happen. So I have the first round of pancakes going, and I have more on the stove, and I'm gonna start getting these ready for the kids, and I'm also pouring them all a glass of milk to go with their pancakes feeding my starter. Again, I just kind of estimate this, um, adding in flour and water until I get the correct consistency, and then I'll just leave this out on the countertop. All right, guys, I'm going to take a quick moment from today's video to thank today's video sponsor, Wild. Wild contains no single-use plastic and comes in a premium reusable case. Wild is powered by plants and has no aluminum, salt, parabens, or sulfates. And all of their formulas are certified vegan and cruelty free. I have been using a natural deodorant for over 10 years now, and I absolutely love Wild. Some of the main reasons I love it is one, it lasts all day, and I love that it is sustainable. It's convenient with their flexible subscription program. I love that it's customizable, and I love that it's really sustainable and great for the environment. Wild has a flexible subscription subscription program that will deliver your deodorant and body wash refills straight to your door. So this is something that I love as a busy mom. It's one less thing that I have to worry about or go to the store for. You can pick and mix and change and try new scents or whatever you like. And they have so many different scents to choose from. And I have tried several and I really love them all. Wild also ships worldwide, so you can get Wild wherever you live. Wild has over 20,000 five-star reviews on Trustpilot, and the thing I kept hearing over and over again that made me want to try Wild is about how it worked 
all day long and also how great it was for our environment. Those are two things that were really important for me, especially when it comes to deodorants and body washes. Wild is a certified B Corporation and 102 tons of plastic diverted from landfills in 2022. If you are ready to try Wild, they are offering my viewers 30% off. So you can scan my QR code or use the link down in my description box below. And don't forget to use my code oilyhouse to get your 30% off. Now this code will not last long because this is one of their best deals yet. So if you're ready to try wild, be sure to check out that link. And now let's get back into this video. All right, so I'm going down to empty out the car. One thing, <laughs> when you have a large family and you are out for the day, I don't even know where all this comes from, but somehow I always come home with more things than I brought, especially this time of year, whenever it's winter, we have so many coats and hats and boots and whatever, but it somehow ends up that at the end of the day, I even have more than I had at the beginning. I don't know where it all comes from. I have dirty clothes I have to sort through here. I have some church clothes that are still clean that need to be hung back up. It was my birthday like a week ago, so my mom gave me a birthday card, so I have that in there. It was also my um, toddler's birthday, and so he had a birthday party, so you see some like random toys in this pile. That was his birthday present that he got at his party. And so I'm going in, I'm reorganizing my diaper bag, and then I'm gonna sort through this mound of clothes into dirty pile, clean pile, what needs to be hung back up, um, hanging up all the coats. This, oh man, this is like why I hate winter. This is it right here. This this entryway, just the job and the coats and just trying to keep all the jackets and coats that you need to keep everybody warm and oh boy. And just keeping everything hung up. I feel like it's just constant, like things are always falling and whatnot. So anyway, <laughs> got the car emptied out, starting a load of laundry. I have so much laundry to do today. I'll be down in this laundry room multiple times, switching out loads. Um, I just get behind on this sometimes. I typically try to do a load a day, but if I miss one day, it just like piles up. So I'm getting some out of the dryer here, and then I am starting a new load in the washer. And when I went to get soap out of that like big five gallon bucket there on top, of the washing machine I realized it was empty that's my homemade soap container and so I'm gonna hurry up and make soap um, it's actually so easy to make it is not a big deal um, I'm gonna show you that here I actually have this recipe like a video tutorial just on making this soap on the YouTube channel and I also have the full recipe on my blog but very simple just a few ingredients this is such a money savings making your own soap I can make a five gallon bucket of soap for like a dollar so the first thing I'm doing is I am shredding up and melting a Fells Napta soap bar which is a laundry soap bar now if you don't want to use a Fells Napta soap bar, I get some people saying they'd rather not use that. I do have a recipe where you can make your own soap bar very simply, and I make those often. Um, just kind of depends on what I have like down there, my little laundry making ingredients. <laughs> sometimes I have homemade bars, sometimes I have those. They're all really cheap to make, and then the ones that, these ones I get at like Walmart for like 97 cents a bar. And so I shred up one of those and melt it, and then I just added in my borax and washing soda. There's also some discrepancies on borax. I have done extensive research on this, and with everything I found, I find it to be a very safe product to use in my laundry soap. So I do use borax and washing soda. And then, like I said, the biggest thing about making laundry soap is making sure that that soap bar is completely melted before adding it into your five gallon bucket and then filling this up with water and then I'll let it sit. I will use some right now, it'll be fine to use, but I'm gonna let this sit and in the morning I'll give it a really, really good shake. Actually, my husband will do it. You can also use like an immersion blender and it is extremely normal for it to gel up. I get that question all the time. It will gel up and that is completely fine. Um, you can put a little bit into a like old laundry soap container and then give it a good shake before you use it. And it works really well. I have been using homemade laundry soap for going on 12 years now. And when I make a big bucket like that, it lasts even a big family, like six months. And so 
can be your soap for like a good year if you if you don't have a gajillion children like I do. <laughs> anyway, I was folding some clothes there and now I'm going into my little boy's room and getting that cleaned up. Um, we were gone a lot this weekend and so things got a little messy. I don't typically worry too much about their room. Um, I mean, I pick up the toys and the clothes, but like making the beds, but I just got this new rug in here. The rug that was in here before, I moved into my room because it was bigger and I needed a bigger rug in my room. I'm redoing my room and my daughter's room. I'm gonna definitely show you everything. It's just, nothing's ready yet. But I'm in the middle of doing that and so things are kind of getting rearranged. I'm kind of just doing a few things. And so I wanted to make their beds and have their room clean for like two minutes so I could just see how it looked with um, this new rug. I just got this new nightstand in here. I put a lamp in here. And so, I don't know, thought it'd be kind of fun to actually like make their room clean for once. I mean, I'm serious. I probably made their bed like three times in their entire lives because, you know, when you have little kids, they're napping and then they sleep at night and it's like, what's the point of making the bed? But for special occasions, I will make it. And today was one of those just because I really wanted to see how this room looked with the new rug in it. My daughter said the new rug is too dark and it makes the room really dark, which it is dark, but it's really pretty. I should get like a close up shot on it to show you guys. I just got it on Facebook Marketplace and I think it looks really pretty with these beds. And I also got the nightstand on Facebook Marketplace. Well, in fact, I even got the, the beds on there. I just have had those for a pretty long time now. But I think this room is so cute. I love it and I love that it's kind of small because it makes it more doable for me to decorate whenever it's just like a little room with not much space, you know, with a couple beds and a nightstand. Like, look at that. It looks really cute. And I just love the little lamp there too. I love when it gets dark and turning the little lamp on and it's a cute little space. And then I also have a little like bookshelf in the corner that you can't see with cute little books on it and then that's like it they have the little wicker toy boxes below their beds and that's where i keep all of their toys they both have one at the end of their beds and then obviously there's some like overflow of toys in the closet but for the most part all of their toys go in that little wicker basket so there it is i thought it looked kind of cute all right heading in to the living room to do a little cleaning in here um, I used to have a cute wicker basket for toys sitting on the fireplace, but my daughter took it into her room and gave me this green ugly basket. She's told me a couple of times, you can switch it back if you want, but whatever, this is what we have for now. I really need some baskets. I've been looking at thrift stores for baskets because I just got that new frame TV and that little black box that's sitting on that end table there. That's for the frame TV, but you don't need that box exposed. So I kind of want to put that in a little basket, um, kind of like over in that corner and then maybe a basket for blankets. Just, you know how it is. Always looking and, and looking for new things and um, trying to finish up a space. So that's just something I've been on the lookout for. I think I've, I feel like I can always use more baskets. So that's one thing that I'll be looking for as well. All right, cleaning out this high chair, the never ending job, like five times a day between snacks, meals, everything. He is a good eater, but man, is he messy. I think he had oatmeal. No, no, we had, we had pancakes this morning. Why is this so, it's probably dirty from like the day before because I'm like scrubbing it here. So I don't remember what, what he had before, but every once in a while, I'll wash that little insert. But for now, just wiping it down, wiping down the tray and just, getting the high chair back together and just, you know, that this is, this is the morning routine. Lots of cleaning up and getting the house back in order. I'm also going to be doing some sweeping over in this area. This baby, <laughs> if you have little babies, you know how it is. When they first start eating, they eat, get like maybe a fourth of the food in their mouth and the rest of it just goes on the floor, but keeps them happy and we do the best we can. And a lot of times if he has some, some good stuff down there, like some good like meat and stuff, I'll just bring that out to our dog and she loves it. She loves getting all the baby scraps. That would be a good thing about having an indoor dog. Come over here and clean it up. <laughs> but instead I just sweep it up and then bring it out to her. She loves it.
All right, I'm getting myself a lemon water. I have been obsessed with lemon water lately, like ice cold lemon water, and I like a lot of lemon in my water. And it's kind of nice because it's a little sour, and then all my kids are like, <laughs> it's too sour for them, so no one takes my drink. But after I make my lemon water, I always feel like, hey, why waste this lemon of what's left? Because lemon has so many great properties for cleaning. And so once I am finished, after I'm done like squeezing the lemon into my drink, I just take that lemon and use it to clean out the sink or vanities or countertops or whatever. It is such a great way to clean things and it smells so good. And in my sink, it actually even helps taking away the stains. So instead of throwing the lemon and the peel away, I always use that to rub down inside of the sink and just wherever I am trying to clean and then rinse that out and it smells so good and everything is nice and clean. Just a good way to be frugal. And then once it's done, I'll put that in the compost pile and it will go outside. All right, time to get started on lunch. And today I'm actually gonna be making a homemade hamburger helper. You guys know how I meal plan. I just take um, meat and put it in the refrigerator at the beginning of the week or whenever I'm out of meat, really. It's not always the beginning. Sometimes it's the middle of the week or just whenever we need meat. And then I go in there and I see what's defrosted and then I come up with a meal depending on what's defrosted. And so today there was some ground beef in there. And so I was like, what should I make with ground beef? I've done spaghetti, we've done chili, we've done meatloaf, sloppy joe, some like homemade hamburger helper. That's something that I don't make extremely often. Um, my kids love it. And so getting that meat browned, I'm adding in some onions and garlic because you guys know my rule of thumb. Every meal must start with onion and garlic. <laughs> Um, I get really, really watery eyes when I cut onions and so many of you guys have been giving me good tips on that and I'm not using them right here because I forgot, but thinking of it now while I'm rewatching through, but they said to leaving a bowl of water next to you, um, putting them in the refrigerator before, what were the other tips? I had more. Anyway, if you get watery eyes with onion, go read through my YouTube comments and you will get ideas of how to make them not water when you're cutting your onions. All right, browning up meat, adding in some onions and garlic, and then I'm also gonna add in some carrots, and then I had a stray zucchini in the refrigerator that was going to go bad if I didn't use it. So I'm adding in some carrot and zucchini just to add in some more vegetables. Um, anytime I make something like this, I feel like if I add in a few extra veggies, the kids never even notice that they're in there. So it's a good way to kind of like hide veggies if you have picky eaters at all. Um, dice them up, put them into like a noodle type meal. Another thing that I do is I shred carrots and I put shredded carrots in my meatloaf. I think it adds flavor and then, um, you know, it's another way to just kind of get some more veggies into your kids without them really noticing. So I just kind of peeled the carrots and the zucchini. The zucchini, I don't always peel, but I peeled it this time because it was starting to look a little sorry and um, the peel was kind of yucky looking. So peeled that, put it in. I'm just going to saute that with the meat and onions and garlic. And then I'm going to add in a bunch of spices. And I put a lid on top of this to make sure the carrots and zucchini are all the way cooked through while I was making my noodles. And then I will make a sauce. Also, you guys probably can see behind me on that little cutting board are some cookies. I mentioned that it was my toddler's birthday over the weekend. And so we are actually gonna be celebrating it just with our immediate family today with lunch, my daughter made cookies and she also made ice cream. And so she said, those are his two favorite things. So that's what I'm making. I was like, that sounds great. So she made cookies and ice cream. And so after lunch, we sang to him and had some cookies and ice cream. So that's what that is. All right, so to make hamburger helper, it's actually really easy to make and it makes it so much healthier when you do it without the box mix. So these are just noodles, obviously. Put a big hunk of butter in there. And then I'm doing some milk and a bunch of cheese. And I'm letting this all melt and kind of simmer together. And then I'll add my meat back into this and kind of let it thicken a little bit up as I cook. Again, I'm not really following recipe. I'm kind of just estimating, but I 
know how to do it because I've done it lots of times. So I know the consistency I'm looking for. And if I need more milk or, um, or cheese or something, I can kind of like tell just by what it feels like when I'm stirring it. Um, adding in some spices. Actually, I did get this recipe originally off of my sister's blog. She has a homemade like hamburger helper. This is, I'm straying from it a little bit here, but if you want like a baseline idea, Farmhouse on Boone hamburger helper, and you can find that recipe. I think I just added in some more butter because I felt like I needed that. And who doesn't, who doesn't love butter? Butter makes everything better. <laughs> That's my motto. All right, so getting this meat put back in here, and then I'll just let this simmer for a second, and this will be ready to go. And then I'm gonna do a quick cleanup because I made a huge mess making this. Um, I tend to overflow things or like be kind of sloppy when I cook, but if you clean as you go, it makes it to where it's not hard to clean up later and nothing gets like stuck on the stove. So I'm gonna wipe down the stove top. I'll even clean my cast iron skillet, kind of let this simmer and get everything else clean before I call in the troops and um, serve lunch. It just is easier to kind of get ahead of that before you have the other cleanup after lunch with those kind of dishes and everything. I get a lot of questions about my soap here that I use on my dishes. I have this recipe on my blog, so I'll link it for you guys down below. And I use it for dishes, but then I also end up using it to wipe down countertops and kind of turns into like an all-purpose spray. Even though it really is for dishes, it's just kind of what I do. I'm kind of lazy and feel like, hey, why, why switch it around? I'll just use what I have. It's kind of how I am. I'm pretty minimal. And then I'll use that when that's gone. I might use another one and I might switch up the recipes that I use, but I do have this recipe on my blog if you're interested in making your own um, dish soap. And I like it in a spray bottle because I find that the easiest way to do dishes, especially whenever you are not using a dishwasher. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and getting a little peek at a very typical morning routine for me. And if you're new here, please that subscribe button. I get out a new video every single week. All right, thanks so much for watching.